Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the T-Motor FT5 MK2 5-inch freestyle quadcopter. This is a 60% ready version, which means that on this drone, the motors 4-in-1 ESC and flight controller are going to be pre-installed for you on this frame and you will need to add your own video system and ready receiver. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install both, go over the features and specs of this quadcopter and finally head outdoors and test it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the drone, you can find a high quality battery velcro strap, a 22mm to 19mm camera adapter, and two sets of T Motor T4943 propellers. As for the drone, it features the T Motor Velox 2306 motors. The 4S version comes with the 2400kb version of these motors, and the 6S version, which is the one I have, comes with the 1950kb version. The stack is based on the Timoto Pacer 50 Ampere BLA32 4-in-1 EC and the Pacer F7 flight controller, which I have recently reviewed. As for the frame, this is an upgraded version of the Timoto FT5 frame, which I've already reviewed, and as far as I can tell, the only difference between the two versions is that the new one features better quality carbon fiber parts. Finally, 3D printed TPU parts, which are going to enable you to protect the bottom of the drone and mount Immortal T and VTX antennas are going to be pre-installed on the frame and the next 60 battery connector is secured to the top plate. Now after this short introduction, let's install the video system and the radio receiver. First using a 2mm hex key driver, disassemble the three top plates and then you'll be able to easily access the camera, stack and VTX areas. As you can see, I've already got the Codex Vista and Crossfire Nano EC receiver installed on this quadcopter, and since I've already shown you how to install both analog and digital VTXs on the T-Motor Pacer F7 flight controller, I'm just going to go ahead and provide you with some advice, which might save you some time in case you're going to build a similar setup. First of all, you will need to use the 12cm long version of the Codex Vista coaxial cable, insert it on the bottom of the stack, and mount the Cadex Vista unit on the front 20 by 20 mm mounting holes as otherwise the cable is going to be too short. In addition, in case you would like to keep your build more tidy and organized, I recommend to rotate the flight controller 180 degrees so the 10 volts pad is going to be closer to the Cadex Vista. In case you're going to use an IPX to SMA or RPSMA antenna connector, make sure that the IPX connector is going to be properly secured and do not apply too much force as otherwise the IPX connector of the Vista might be ripped off. Finally, I recommend to use zip ties in order to properly secure the motor wires. You should also pay attention that the 7 pins JST connector that will enable you to easily connect a DJI unit is not provided with this kit, so I just soldered the Vista directly to the flight controller, and besides the accessories that I showed you, no extra screws or wires are provided with this quadcopter, so for example, you will need to obtain M2 screws for installing the Cadex Vista. Overall, I think that getting a 60% ready drone such as this one has a couple of major advantages. First of all, it can save you some time and money. It will enable you to use a video and radio system of your choice. And finally, in case you are a beginner and you don't want to build your first drone from scratch, maybe because you're afraid of the soldering work involved, most of the soldering work is pre-done for you, but having the need to install your own video and radio system will get you familiar with your drone, which is very important. So in my opinion, Timotor have done an excellent job in creating a versatile, beginner-friendly 5-inch freestyle platform as it features high-quality but yet budget-friendly components and I also really like this frame, which is very robust and will enable you to easily service all the electronic components. Finally, in case you are debating whether to go with the 4S or 6S version, in my opinion, you should go with the 6S version since it features 1900 kb motors which will allow you to even fly this quadcopter using forest batteries even though it's going to feel a little bit underpowered and as you advance you can move to 5S and 6S batteries. As for fly time, which is of course heavily dependent on how you fly, using this 4S 1500 mAh battery I got about 4 minutes, using this 2200 mAh 5S battery I got about 7 minutes, and using this 1300mAh 6S battery, I got about 5 minutes. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.